Kia ora. Welcome to Blue Bolt News. I'm Amelia. And I'm Dean. Today on Blue Bolt News, we have an island rescue, a kidnapping attempt, and a world record. But first up, we have a story about a new discovery. There has been a recent discovery of a new planet in our solar system. It lies between Mars and Earth, and it has a good climate for humans. Professor Oscar, the finder of the planet, stated it has double the oxygen of Earth, and humans should be able to live there. He has named it Zeus after the Greek god because of its wonderful climate. Professor Oscar and his associates are eager to construct a craft and launch it to the new planet, but the New Zealand government said it was far too dangerous and expensive. The idea has been abolished, but Professor Oscar is still hopeful of getting to the new planet of Zeus. Here's our on-the-spot reporter Thomas with all the people involved. Hello. I'm Thomas, and today we have Professor Oscar, Mr. Longpockets, and a NASA representative. Professor Oscar, how did you feel when you discovered this planet? I felt excited to discover a new planet that has a good climate for humans. This will change the course of the future. Do you really think people could live here? Yes, because like Earth, it has many trees, plants, and lots of water. How did the government decision make you feel? It made me feel disappointed because I want to explore the new planet and see what new forms of life there are. Thanks, Professor. Now, Mr Longpockets, why did you say no to going to Zeus? Because it costs too much and it will take up to 10 years to get people there, so it seems like a waste of money and time. Do you think this would put New Zealand on the map regarding space exploration? Yes, because Professor Oscar is a proud Kiwi and he would love for New Zealand to discover a new planet first. What else will you spend the money on? I'm going to spend it on building more homeless shelters to clean up the streets of New Zealand and support more New Zealand sport teams. Thanks, Mr Longpockets. Now, Mr Armstrong, you represent NASA. What would going to Zeus do for the world? We don't know yet, but we think there could be some undiscovered species there that could help with human development. What would you say to people that are going to a new planet? To be prepared for anything. We don't know what's there yet, but we do know there's lots of thunder and lightning. Are the Americans interested in this discovery? Yes, they want to claim this find for themselves, which is why New Zealand should try to get there first. Thank you, everyone. That's all from me. Now back to Dean Amelia in the studio. Thanks, Thomas. And now for something completely different. Recently, a woman entered a kindergarten in Monganui and offered the children cupcakes. Every child happily took one, but the plan was a trap. The cupcakes were hot in the middle, and suddenly, all the children were running around, yelling and screaming because they had hot mouths. In the confusion, Rachel McMuffin, the cupcake lady, kidnapped one of the kids called Cindy. One of the teachers ran after them and saw her put Cindy in the boot of the car. Luckily, the police caught Miss McMuffin and Cindy was returned safely. Now over to our reporter, Ziva, who has all the people concerned. Thanks, Dean. Hello, I'm Ziva, and joining me now is Officer Bella, Cindy and Rachel. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Miss McMuffin... What were you thinking when you went to the kindergarten? I was hoping that my plan would work and that I'd be able to escape with a few more children than I did. Hopefully I won't be going to jail because otherwise it will affect my future plans. What were you going to do with Cindy? I was going to lock her in my house and put her in an armchair, then use her for my future cupcake experiments to use on future cup. <laughs> What are your future plans? I'd like to avoid going to jail, so I'll need a lawyer for a low price. Although, if I'm not successful, don't worry, you'll see me again. Thank you. Now, Officer Bella, what was your role in all of this? Because of this incident, I had to chase McMuffin down the road and handcuff her before she could get away. Surprisingly, she was very fast. Hopefully, we won't be seeing her on these streets for a very long time. What do you think will happen now? The consequence for attempted kidnapping, kidnapping is up to 10 to 15 years in jail. Any advice for kindergartners? 
Don't let strangers in unless they are supervised and don't let random food in children's play areas or schools. Thank you. Now Cindy, did you like the cupcakes? No, they were very hot and spicy and they burnt my tongue. What do you think should happen now? Miss McMuffin should go bye-bye and never be allowed back at my candy ever again. Have you learned anything from this? Yes, don't trust strangers because they might put you in the boot of their car and not all cupcakes are yummy. Thanks Cindy, you can go to the playground now and we're out of time. Thank you ladies. Now back to you in the studio. And now for our next story. One woman's crazy idea turned into a world record attempt after months of hard work. Last year, Molly Davidson was looking at the Guinness World Record book and a spectacular photo caught her eye. It was 180,000 bald-headed people standing together. She knew New Zealand and Australia could beat their record. Starting in New Zealand, she went to towns and cities, getting people to shave their heads. The first to agree was a young man called Floyd. The fashion spread and she did the same around Australia. All the bald heads met in Wellington and a photo was taken. The record was broken. Amazing. Let's cross to our On The Spot reporter who's more on the situation. Over to you, Hayley. Thanks, Amelia and Dean. I'm Hayley, and joining me today, we have Molly, Floyd and Cooper. Firstly, Molly, how did you convince so many people to have a haircut? Some were eager to compete and took little convincing. Others needed to be bribed with $200. Also eager to be in the Guinness World Record book. What did breaking the record mean for you? It was amazing, and now I'm famous with millions of followers on social media, and now I can quit my boring job at McDonald's. Thanks, Molly. And Floyd, what made you think this was a good idea? I thought it would look good, and I was sick of always washing my hair and going back to the barber. I also can't wait to see myself in the Guinness Book of World Records. Is this here a good thing, and why? Yes and no. I seem to save on shampoo and don't have to look after my hair, but it gets really cold, so I always seem to be looking for my beanie. How did family members react to all this? My mum was not happy, and she chased me around the house with the belt for 30 minutes straight. If, and everyone else just wants to feel it and slap it. That gets annoying. Thanks, Floyd. And Cooper, you're an international hairdresser. Was this good for your business? It was very good for business. I got given lots of money, and my hair salon, Cooper's Crazy Cuts, go there now, got very popular after I broke the world record. What do you think about the style of cut? I think it's an insult to my skill, but yet again, it's a very easy cut to do, and my business skyrocketed, and it is, and now I'm doing celebrity haircuts like Dwayne the Rock Johnson. He's my best friend now. What do, you, what's going to happen for you now? I'm probably going to buy multiple shops around the world, and name them Cooper's Crazy Cuts, and try a new style of haircut, the 360 Olive McTwist, and see if Floyd will be my test dummy. Thanks for your time, everyone. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Hayley. Now it's time to go over to Case and Andrew with the weather update. Thank you, Dean and Amelia. Hello, I'm Kate. And I'm Andrew. The country has heaps of different weather going on today. Starting up north, Auckland will be fine with a high of 24 degrees, maybe some light cloud coming in. A nice day to go shopping in the city. Next in Hamilton, it will be cold early on, but clearing after lunch. So put on a coat and don't slip over if you go for an early walk. In Topper, some rain is expected in the morning and cloud in the afternoon. A high of 20 degrees. A bit cold for a swim in the lake. Wanganui will be hot and fun because it's the best climate in the world. A lovely day to go for a walk along the river or hang out close to dry. Wellington will have a bit of wind, 25 kilometre gusts, but still a uh, nice enough day. So go to Tapapa or watch a movie if you don't like the wind. Christchurch will be frosty in the morning, but this will clear to a fine day. 15 will be your high, so extra clothing will be needed early on. Lastly in Dunedin, it will be a lot colder down south. There could even be some snow on the surrounding hills. Wrap up warmly or stay by the fire.
That's all from us now. Good night, New Zealand. We'll spot you tomorrow. Back to the news desk. Thanks, Andrew and Kate. And now our last story. Recently, two girls were found on an undiscovered island in the Pacific Ocean. The girls, Tessa and Eva, were in a plane crash five years ago and they set up a huge SOS sign on the beach. Eventually, it proved to be useful. A pilot who was delivering mail to Fiji saw the sign. He landed and took the girls back to New Zealand. Eva, the oldest, said they used resources from the plane crash and the island to make the sign and stay alive. The shelter was well built and an experienced explorer who visited the site com complimented them on the construction. The Queen of England, Mia, even sent them a letter and medals of bravery. Now over to Carter. Thank you Dean and Amelia. I'm Carter and today on Two Minutes with Carter we have Eva, Casey and the Queen. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Eva, what were you thinking when the plane crashed on this island? I was very scared and thought that I would die. The plane wasn't slowing down, and when I realised no one else was on the island, I was hoping someone would save us soon. How did you pass the time? We would go swimming on hot days, but lots of the time we would search for food. We would also have to search for coconuts so we could bath. What was it like to be rescued? It was amazing to get off the island and shower, but it was almost like I had to start a new life because almost everyone forgot about us. Thanks, Eva. And Casey, you're the pilot. What was your reaction when you saw the sign? I was excited that I could rescue someone, but scared I would be too late. Mostly, I was thinking about where to land. I had no experience of landing on sand and had only ever landed on concrete. How long do you think the girls had been there for when you first saw them? They were skinny and tidy and sunburned. Their hair was tangled with leaves sticking out of it. They smelled like smoke and coconut. I thought they had been there for four years. Are you going to keep doing the same job in the future? Yes, but I will go around searching for SOS signs or do tours around islands for people who want an adventure. It gets quite boring flying from New Zealand to Fiji all day. Thanks, Casey. Now, Your Majesty, how did you find out about all of this? I was reading the newspaper when this rather exhilarating story caught my eye. I decided I'd give them awards for their bravery and for entertaining me with their story. Do you enjoy awarding people for events like this and why? Yes, because it makes me joyful to give awards to deserving citizens. It also makes me more popular to the public so I can become a more well-known monarch. What's on the cards for you now? Finding more deserving citizens to give award to and getting more royal corgis to keep me company. Well, everyone, especially Your Majesty, thank you very much for joining us. This has been Two Minutes with me, Carter. Back to the news desk. Well, that's all we have time for. We hope you've enjoyed today's show. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Until then, I'm Dean. And I'm Amelia for Blue Bolt News. Kakite anoa.